Coach, what can you tell the first couple of days, or what do you look for the first couple of days without pads? Mm -hmm. Well, I really look for improvement in knowledge because the game is a process, and you go through these different phases. We had spring work, we had some summer work, and then into fall ball. So, you know, each one of those sessions that they leave and digest exactly what it is we're doing and look more into it. Get more comfortable. So, really looking for guys, each guy, to really improve his play, improve his knowledge, and show that here right away. Can you take some of the deer in the headlight look out of it when you had so many guys here in the spring? Like the, this morning, it didn't seem like the first few minutes. I mean, a lot of those guys have been here already. Yeah, they're definitely much more comfortable. Yeah, definitely much more comfortable. And they'll keep growing in the game. Certain guys, again, that are younger, they're. Um, you know, they're trying to still feel the game out a little bit, but definitely uh, way ahead of where they were. What's the most important thing to establish these first couple of days? Well, I think good habits. You know, I often talk about chemistry, which is relative to our commitment overall, and uh, that's important right now. As we come out here early, we establish good, good work habits, we expect uh, a high standards, expectation, play good player. There's, uh, I know you're off the defense, but what does it mean to the team when you heard about Jalen this morning with his appendix? I'm sorry? Did you hear about Jalen Smith and his I don't really talk about anything relative to our players' health. So Coach Petrino can, can handle all those kind of questions, guys. Brian, when you – Coach thought, coaches always like to give the young guys a chance early on. What's your philosophy defensively? How when, when do you kind of know a guy's ready to use or not? And I guess this year maybe a little different with the new rule. Well, I mean, you're only going to find out if you get them reps. So we're looking for those guys that naturally have some instinct, that naturally feel comfortable with the game. And uh, again, the only way you're going to find out is really get them reps. And uh, you know, we run high tempo practices, so they, they get their share of work. How many guys would you like to go into a game with a defensive back? Any, any, any particular number that says, all right, I need this many corners to be effective? Well, again, you'd like to be too deep in every position. And really, when you talk about corners, you can include the, the nickel position. So you want to leave six guys that are really good. How many do you think you have now? We've got 10 here, okay. <laughs> Brian, you, you brought in a new scheme. What positions would you say, at, at what positions would you say is that different, the most different from what the guys were dealing with before? Mm. We may we may be a little bit you know more multiple, uh -huh. um, so for our which is effective for our entire front seven, really a little more multiple, but you know just a lot of similarities. It, it, it seems like especially in the, in the past couple of years, there's been a lot. There's been a little bit of a blur between the safety and safeties and the linebacker outside linebackers. Safeties can play up, linebackers can play in pass coverage. Do you do you have a lot of guys who can play both? Do you? Move a lot of guys back and forth. Uh, we'll keep looking at people. You know, we're still evaluating. We'll be, you know, in pads here pretty soon. But we definitely want to look at guys that can play multiple positions. That's always a huge advantage for us and for a player. When you talk about leadership, what do you look for? Who do you, who do you feel like you can get it from on your group early on? Well, I would expect all of our older guys to provide leadership. But the best example of leadership to me is when they're away from. Us as coaches. So, you know, what goes on in that locker room, and what's said, and how they handle uh, one another relative to those times is critical. I think it's critically important. PJ is a guy that some of the guys on defense have singled out as a guy that's really stepped up into a leadership role. Do you see that uh, from PJ? Yeah, he's he is. Again, he's he's a process guy. He's growing in the game. He has very good athletic traits, and he's growing in the game. And went through a. a you were talking about PJ and Banasur. Okay, so I start talking about PJ. <laughs> PJ and Banasur definitely, you know, uh, is providing really good leadership. Real positive guy, great attitude, um, and he's doing a good job, becoming consistent at what he's doing as a corner. So it, that's definitely there. Right on second, do you get this time of year, especially with kind the of start of training toys. camp? <laughs> And you have so many new toys. You're not being new in that. Yeah. You know, how excited are you? Well, it's exciting uh, because I like to be a major part of developing players. You know, it's fun with college players. So I'm excited to uh, 
help some guys. We have a lot of guys that are ascending, and we want to keep that process uh, speeded up for all the guys. So that, that, that's the exciting thing, I think, is coaching. Which guys are, do you sense that are going to be some important guys in games for in terms of playmakers on defense? No, it's too early to answer that. You know, I don't want to be specific about guys. I mean, you can see guys that we've got a lot of young guys that haven't played a lot. We've got a couple guys that have played quite a bit and been productive. So we would expect their production. But we got to grow productive players. And I don't know where that's all going to come from right now. I know we have some good athletes that are capable. And again, we just got to keep developing and grow their their comfort level with what we're doing. Goldwire is kind of sidelined side for the spring. How's he looked during the off season and especially on day one? Yeah, well, he's made some major improvements, you know, coming off the, uh, the shoulder from a strength standpoint, and that was really, really critical. One thing I'd say, I, I liked how he carried himself on the field today. Um, I thought his demeanor, body language, and all that was really strong, which, which, is, which pleases me. How important is it for you to float? We, we saw the day, we only saw a little bit, but, you know, Ryan had his linebacker. You were kind of floating around. How much do you like that, and is it important? coordinator to kind of have your hands everywhere? Well, I think it is. Um, I like to stay involved with, with all the positions and you know, keep, kind, of, kind of keep track of what we're doing and how specific that is to installations and our scheme and what we need to improve on. So I think it's a good good way to have it. Um, you know, I've done that now for years uh, as a coordinator, so uh, I guess I have some comfort with it also. All right, guys, the players are. Thanks, guys.